Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the December 20th, 2011 Pittsburgh Board of Public Education Legislative Meeting. Before we begin this evening, I'd like to ask everyone to please turn off all cell phones and pagers or put them on vibrate. Would everyone please rise so we can salute the flag. Thank you. There are no Distinguished Achievement Awards this evening. Mr. Weiss, may we have a roll call, please? Mr. Brentley? Mr. Brentley is here, but I'll wait until he arrives. Mrs. Kalazi? Here. Mrs. Fink? Here. Dr. Hawley? Here. Mr. Eisler? Present. Mr. McCray? Here. Ms. Sheely? Here. Mr. Sumter? Present. This is Zuda. Present. Commissioner Brentley has arrived, so all members are present. Here. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. At this time, I'd like to ask Mr. Sumter to please share our core beliefs and commitments. Thank you, Mrs. Azuda. The Pittsburgh Board of Education wants to maximize the academic achievement of each and every student within the Pittsburgh Public School District and make sure that that's carried out in a safe and orderly learning environment. We want to provide the necessary support in an effective and efficient manner for that. We want to distribute resources in an equitable manner throughout the district to meet needs of students and also to improve public and community engagement. We feel that that will improve our governance and translate into raising achievement in the district. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sumter. Will everyone please turn to the minutes from last month? Are there any additions or corrections, deletions? Hearing none, move to approve. Kalazi Eisler, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to read the executive session statement. In addition to executive sessions announced at the legislative meeting of November 22nd, 2011, the board met in executive session on December 14, 2011, and immediately before this legislative meeting to discuss various personnel matters that may include, but are not limited to, administrative vacancies and positions opened and closed. Finally, at the executive session immediately before this legislative set meeting, the board discussed student discipline cases that involved violations of various portions of the Code of Student Conduct. The board does not vote at executive sessions. You could please turn to the Committee on Education. Before we begin with the committee report, I'd like to ask you to turn to page 13 of 13, and I will give you the student's suspension, transfer, and expulsion numbers for this month. There were 65 students suspended for four to 10 days. 13 of 13. No student suspended for four to 10 days and transferred to another Pittsburgh public school. Three students expelled out of school for 11 days or more. No students expelled out of school for 11 days or more and transferred to another <coughs> Pittsburgh public school. Before we um, begin comments, I would like to ask Dr. Lippert to make the changes we have. Okay, good evening. We do have a change to item number 20. If I could direct the board's attention to page 12 of 13. And we're going to be looking at the amended item of the CTE comprehensive plan dated December 2011. What I'd like to do is start from the bottom because it's easier to find where we're going to make this change. So if you count up six lines, to the last semicolon, I'm going to read the changes as follows. The refrigeration, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning program, which is currently assigned to Pittsburgh Langley High School, will be reassigned to Pittsburgh Brashear High School and, and we're going to strike out the next three words, be moved from, and we're going to add the following four words, will continue to be housed at, I guess that was six, South Annex. 
and we're going to strike out to Pittsburgh Brashear High School. So the amended item would read as follows. The refrigeration, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning program, which is currently assigned to Pittsburgh Langley High School, will be reassigned to Pittsburgh Brashear High School and will, be, will continue to be housed at South Annex. And then in the chart at the bottom of the page on 12 of 13, you'll notice that in the Southwest region cluster under Pittsburgh Brashear, there has been a star added to the refrigeration, heating, ventilation, air conditioning program. And if you follow that down to the note section, a note has been added that states the following. The refrigeration, heating, ventilation, air conditioning program will be assigned to Pittsburgh Brashear High School that will be housed at the South Annex. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lippert. Now we'll start with any questions that were not addressed at agenda review. Mr. Brentley. I have a couple of questions and I'll just go directly to the changes of Dr. Lippert. Uh, the, <clears throat> the changes came about how, uh, how did the staff uh, come up with the recommendations to include it in today before consideration for a vote? Um, after our agenda review session last week, uh, the board raised several questions. Um, we did follow up on those concerns and feel it's in the best interest of our students and the CTE program to have the program remain at the South Annex. Okay. Well, I am, and this is, I guess, Dr. Lane, I uh, I'm support your recommendations. I mean, and I agree with them and I will support them. I, I want to uh, also point out at that same legislative meeting, uh, there were several recommendations also about number one, and that is the Summer Dreamers Academy. Can you tell me, have we adjusted the Summer Dreamers Academy to include a site in the East End? And if so, where is it going to be located? Uh, Mr. Brentley, uh, we did relook at that, which is what we agreed to do. And uh, there were a number of reasons why sites had been rejected, uh, either because of size, uh, because we will have several hundred children, they were too small, or air conditioning. Uh, we do, however, still have a potential, if not a guarantee, uh, that we have a community provider that uh, might be able to provide a site uh, in, the, uh, in the East End. So that's uh, where it stands at this moment, and I'll get more information to the board when we know more about that. Okay. Well, Dr. Lane, I, I, I want to make a point here, uh, and I'm going to continue to stress the importance that board members are volunteers and uh, when we make suggestions uh, that we would hope that the staff would evaluate every recommendation equally. A perfect example here is number 20. There were some board members who were very, very vocal about uh, the recommendations and made it very clear that they would not be supporting it. Your staff moved very quickly to adjust to accommodate. Uh, also, with several board members raised concerns about the East End and raise concerns about the importance of having a site there. And we we did not give the same kind of courtesy. And so I, you know, I have to point that out because, you know, we we're all moving in the right, in, in the same direction. And, and I just think that as a staff, you have to be very, very mindful of, of working hard for some or, or making things work for some, but not moving on the others. I just think with the suggestions that were made, that would have been very, very easy to make or to make a recommendation for the site. It was also talked about that it was uh, East End has a very large, large number of young folks that participated in the Freedom School that I believe that it's at Lincoln, as well as other uh, after school programs. So my point is the numbers were there. And so, uh, <clears throat> Unless someone is willing to make a, a quick recommendation here that we can amend this and, 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 and consider this this evening as well, I, I am going to be voting no on this. And I'm going to encourage my colleagues uh, to, to vote no uh, for the sake of procedures. It is important that we have equity throughout this district in terms of opportunities and availabilities of programs, especially in the needier community. And so I just just disappointed to see that 
Uh, I am willing, if there's a colleague here who has a location that they would like to put on the table, I would hate to do it that way, but I would be more than willing uh, to support it. So uh, I just want to close at this time to just once again and strongly encourage the administration. Uh, some board members were very, 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 very strong in their opinion concerning number 20 and the Brashear. And they made it very clear that they would not support it. And I don't know if that was a key factor that made the staff go back and sharpen their pencils and make, make it work. Other board members, you know, articulated their concerns and the importance of having it, uh, an East End site. And it just simply w was not considered. So uh, I will not be supporting it. I'm encouraging my colleagues to uh, not support this item and then encourage our staff to go back and identify a location there were several that were suggested that I think could work, and we want to make sure that uh, we kind of do things evenly here. And so uh, I, that's it. That's all I have for now. Thank you. Mrs. Kalazi? Thank you. I just want to clarify for the record that one of the concerns that was being brought up about number um, 20 um, in reference to the HVAC heating, ventilation, air conditioning, refrigeration program. Um, one of the main concerns I think that the, uh, at least that I brought um, forward at agenda review was the cost of moving the program when we weren't sure if it was the, the most appropriate thing to do at the moment. Not that anybody was actually uh, trying to stop the program or you know trying to do anything um, that was not to the advantage of our children. It's just spending money that we're not sure if it's going to work or fit or belonged where it was being um, suggested was the concern. So I, I don't want anybody <coughs> to walk away thinking that um, this board wasn't in support of Dr. Lane or, or her uh, agenda. And then as far as the Summer Dreamers is concerned, I'm curious just to know, what, do you have any idea when you think the lottery system will be ready to show us? Um, well, the lottery system hasn't been totally finalized, but uh, the enrollment is open on March 12th uh, for students, and the application deadline is May 18th. So I think we can safely assume the lottery would take place after May 18th. Um, and since we're on the topic um, of Summer Dreamers, um, I do want to make sure the board understands we did review East Insights because, I mean, I think we agree it would be desirable to have another site. Uh, there are several things we had to think about. Air conditioning, the, site, the gym facilities, because the kids do use the gym, outside space, um, and some are not available this summer because of transitions. For example, Obama's moving to Peabody, that kind of thing. Several sites are too small. For example, uh, Sunnyside is too small. No air conditioning at Minidaire or Sunnyside. Alderdice already has secondary summer school. And we have 700 children, so Faison is too small. And um, so that was, um, I didn't want uh, the board to think that somehow we didn't hear that and certainly didn't support the idea. And as I said, there is still a possibility that we're working on. And, uh, but we will give you more information on that uh, if it develops as something that we can go through with. Thank you. Mrs. Fink? Do you have any idea when you would know if this partnership would pan out? The partnership for the Summer Dreamers with the community provider. Um, I would expect, I probably would know within the next four to six weeks. I think it would probably, uh, I think it would be safe to say uh, that we know for sure one way or the other before it would, before the 12th, before enrollment would actually open because we wouldn't want to have kids enrolling and not know if that was possible or not. Well, then I will support that, but I would agree that it's always better to have it closer to home and more kids would be inclined to take advantage of it. So I will support that as long as I know, you know, we would know in a reasonable time frame if we can do that. And I, I do applaud the leaving the HVAC at South and hopefully I'm, I'm really looking forward to a, a good discussion amongst ourselves 
about the future of CTE locations, programs, and anything else that goes along with it because it's long overdue. Thank you, Dr. Holly. I have to say that I'm, I'm quite disappointed that the district feels as though a community agency has to take up the torch for our children. Um, I don't mind having the community agency support the work that the district is doing, but for a summer program, the children should be using the curriculum that you're going to be giving all of the other students um, in the school district for the summer pro program. Secondly, you could have used two buildings. You could have used phase on for the K to five part, and you could have used Sunnyside for the six to eight. They didn't all have to go to the same building or they could have gone to Colfax for six to eight. You know, there are configurations that you could have used in support of the children in the East End. And I'm just going to tell you, I am very disappointed that the district is not putting a summer site in the East End. I think those children are as deserving as anyone else to get that extra support. Now, within this lottery, that you're going to be making up. Um, has anyone considered how you're going to support the children with special needs? Are they going to be a part of the lottery? Is there going to be a certain percentage that they, um, where they're going to be able to attend as well? Um, what kind of support is going to be given to them during the summer? Uh, all of these questions I need to have before I can um, vote on anything that uh, is going to be used for supporting youngsters in the summer academically. And even though I, I'm, I'm very committed to community partnerships, and I certainly do want to have a community partnership for all of the children within the school district, we should have community partnerships with all of the, all of the summer dreamer activities. But I'm not going to put that responsibility for educating students in the summertime on a community partner. That should be done through the school district. And um, I'm still concerned. You sent me information on the new teacher center uh, proposal. I got it at about 4.45 this afternoon. It was a lengthy little um, packet. Thank you, but that's okay. I can read it that quick and decipher it that quick. And I'm going to say again that this survey is very similar to the survey that we took years ago that was actually done by the technology department, whereas we did not have to pay the kind of dollars that you're paying an outside group to do. So um, I won't be voting. I won't be giving an affirmative to that one. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about CTE. Um, again, I'm shocked that you came in with a proposal that you really felt was going to work out for CTE. I am not in agreement to having standalone sites where children have to move from school to school in order to get to a program. And even though I have to agree that South Annex is much easier to get to on a bus than Brashear, I think that we should, maybe the district should have thought very clearly as to where you could have put that in a school where it's more accessible to children that can get to it very easily. So, um, I won't be voting on this either in the affirmative. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Eisler. Thank you, Mrs. Azuda. Um, I know there's been a fair amount of discussion at Summer Dreamers. I think one of the good things about Summer Dreamers, and I thank you, Dr. Lane, and your staff 
for securing funds to continue this project. Um, this is one that we were concerned about and whether or not we were going to be able to continue the project district wide um, in, to any degree after the era money ran out. So I think uh, the foundation community coming to further help this school district and its students is, is very important. And we do know that there is probably going to be greater demand than there are dollars to fit. And I, again, I think you're doing the best as you can. In terms of the CTE, I think one of the good things about the discussion that we're going to have, and it is a discussion I think that um, is driving a lot of what we're going to do is based upon what we can afford and what the taxpayer can pay for. How high can we go? And as we have talked about um, class sizes driving, I should say class enrollment driving some of the programs and offerings, I think we're going to have to take a look at this very clearly at CTE. And I think some of the numbers in this particular program, we've got to take a look at very clearly, whether the numbers that are come in are, are actual numbers and how we measure them and how we determine them. So I think that this is the best we can do, but you know, the second note is, other, is somewhat problematic too for us. The culinary arts and cosmetology programs will be assigned to Pittsburgh Perry, will be housed in the Oliver Building. Again, I, I think when we make changes, we have to have as much information ahead of time as we can. Um, and it's incumbent upon your staff to provide you with that information so that we're not making changes um, as we go. I do think and it's been pointed out that this program at South will probably be the most cost effective for now, but I think we also have to take a look at what our attendance is going to be, not only enrollment, but attendance through the year. Thank you, Mrs. Azuda. Thank you. Mr. McRae. Here. No, go ahead. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with, I don't have any comments. I just want to make sure I'm not making too much noise. Thank you, Mr. Sumter. Thank you, Mrs. Azuda. Uh, the first item is that the Board of Directors of the School District of Pittsburgh authorize its proper officers to accept the amount of money from the Fund for Excellence in Pittsburgh and the Public Schools for the Summer Dreamers Academy uh, for 2012. Summer Dreamers in concept and in idea is an excellent one in terms of making sure that students don't lose anything during the summer. Uh, also to help those students who are most needy during the summer also. However, I do have concern for the fact that there is was not a uh, site in the east um, cited initially or even uh, decided on after that. Uh, when we talk about equity, uh, those ideas come to mind. Um, the other item is number 20, which is the amendment for the career and technical education regional plan. I also want to echo, echo comments to this extent that we need as much information as possible. And for items going forward, if we could just have a cost benefit analysis on items so we know what all the costs, all the positive and negative impacts of an item as opposed to another decision. And I say this in a sense that when the decision was made, concerning Oliver and Perry as to which school to utilize. And there were comments at the public hearing and comments at other meetings regarding the size of the facilities. I don't remember any square footages provided to us regarding the size and the amount of cost it would be and whether or not it would be feasible to move one school and the other. Absent the comments coming from the public, absent the emotion, absent the attachment to the buildings, what is feasible? It sounds to me that Perry could fit in Oliver, but Oliver couldn't fit in Perry, whether it's by cost, being cost prohibitive or not. If that were the case, from the comments that I had it heard at the agenda review and have heard at this table, I get the impression that we found out after that decision was made that it would be costly to move the CTE to the Perry building. Had we had that information prior to that vote, it may have come out with different outcomes. I think that this board needs to revisit that decision next month to revisit it either at a business meeting, education meeting, wherever it sees fit, 
or at the agenda review or at the legislative meeting in the sense that if you don't have complete and total information, then it's hard to make uh, an intelligent decision. If you come to find out later down the road that Oliver was the more accommodating building if Perry becomes too full, and it also goes for the uh, junior ROTC program too, then I would hate to have to move that population four, five, six, however many years from now again into displace. It's better to get it right on the front end than to try it and see that it doesn't work and then have to make adjustments down the road. So I say that in the sense that there were comments from the public, comments at this table as to which one would be the better facility, which one had the more amenities, which one could provide, you know, when we're talking about the better amenities, of course, Oliver has the best athletic, not the best, their athletic facilities are right there at the school. And even to the extent that the citywide uh, track meets are held at Oliver. So either we're, we're going to keep using the facilities, but it's going to cause, it's going to cause transportation concerns, which otherwise would not. So I only say that in a sense, because it's on the agenda regarding leaving those two CTE items at uh, Oliver and the, I can understand why the junior ROTC should be at one or the other because if it's not in the same building where the students are, it's too costly to move out for one period as opposed to moving out for half a day. So again, if we can get a cost benefit analysis, I'm going to keep saying that same term over and over again, a cost benefit analysis that tells you all the costs, all the benefits, positive and negative of the decisions that are made, it's easier to prioritize and not just go with emotion, sentiment, and uh, human attachment to a facility. And the distinction or the stark contrast between the populations, one in Oliver, one in Perry, what we saw at the public hearing, what one side of the room looked like and the other side of the room would look like, that should not factor into our decision making. It should be based on what makes sense, what makes common sense, and what would be feasible for the long-term existence of this district and servicing school children. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shealy. Thank you, Mr. Mrs. Azuda. Um, I, you know, Mr. Center, I, I do not disagree <laughs> with your statements regarding a, a relook at the Perry Oliver decision. Um, it just it feels funny to me, but I think we, if if we don't close Oliver, then both buildings have to remain open because of the time for next school year. This is not, there's there's nothing we could do for the 2012 school year because of state law and school closing um, parameters. True. There are uh, issues, <clears throat> excuse me, there are issues regarding notice uh, in terms of staff, et cetera, I'd have to review the, the schedule to make a final determination on that. But time is a factor. I can't tell you definitively that uh, it's a factor right now. I don't, I don't know. I did not know this was going to come up tonight. But I can certainly review that and give the board a response. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. Um, I, I think, though, it is a healthy conversation to have. Um, it, it just, I just wanted to call out that it, it, there may be some time limitations to having it for the next school year. Um, and my only other question, Dr. Lee, you specifically mentioned, excuse me, some schools that you looked in, looked at on the East End regarding um, Summer Dreamers, but you did not specifically mention Westinghouse. Um, could you tell us why Westinghouse wasn't considered as a Summer Dreamer site, please? Um, and I wouldn't, um, I didn't personally review the East End School staff did. Westinghouse is not on the list that is in front of me. Uh, I don't know if that means it wasn't considered or not. Uh, but um, I couldn't, you know, as I said, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have a response for you for that, but I can certainly get you one. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Zuda. Before we vote, could I just ask for clarification on the um, eastern end of the city for Summer Dreamers Academy? When you mentioned working with a um, an outside 
in what capacity? This is one of our uh, district partners already, and um, there is at least some interest in discussing having a summer program. So uh, it's one of the partnership agreements we already have in place. So is it to host the physical Summer Dreamers program at their site or for them to no, do a summer program? I'm sorry, it would be at one of our sites someone else to do a yeah use our site for a summer program mm -hmm. and it's not summer dreamers okay thank mm -hmm. you that's what i was doing because i i just said it wasn't if i may Do dr lane i'm afraid that i didn't understand that at all could you just go back a few steps and explain what partnership who it's with and what exactly that means I didn't want to go uh, to commit this partnership because they haven't agreed to do this yet. And that's why I'm not naming anyone because I don't want uh, to be premature with this. But it's one of the community partners we already um, um, have an agreement with that expressed at least some interest of providing uh, not Summer Dreamers but Freedom School at a site in the East End. And so that's what, that's what the conversation has been about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I too totally misread that. I I thought that when you were saying hosting a summer program, that you were talking about some community partner that was willing to lend their site for summer dreamers. That was my understanding, and I I'm with Dr. Holly when she talks about having the same curriculum and using the Summer Dreamers curriculum, which ties in with what the kids have been learning all year uh, and getting them ready for the new curriculum that they'll face in the next grade. Uh, I think that's really important and I think that's why Summer Dreamers has been so successful. And for the kids to have a different curriculum, that would not be logical to me. I, I would think that um, to keep it, to keep the education flowing and to keep everybody on track, uh, it should be the same curriculum. So I, I guess now I'm just a little confused because I totally took that the wrong way. I, I thought they were offering a facility. Mr. Brentley. I just want to make a quick question. Dr. Lane, I'm going to ask a question. I already know the answer, but I'm going to ask because Mark Roosevelt used to throw it out all the time. Holding this item for 30 days would mean what? Um, Go ahead. I'll give, I was going to give you Mark, Mark Roosevelt's response. No, we got to do it fast. Please. Now, now, now. And it's never true but in, anyway but how about this your... response i'm not sure okay. um and uh, i'm not sure if there's anyone here that could respond to the question i don't think there is uh, dr french do you have any idea if there's any problem with holding this for 30 days this is accepting money and we'd have to i would want to look and see because off the top of my head i don't know we're just accepting the money for this so i'm not sure we're actually committing to the site so i need to read this very carefully so it may just be about accepting the money so you give me a uh, okay. it, so it's really not about the site so if we don't want to turn the money away uh, i think we can come back and revisit the site that's not that does not seem to be an but, issue you know doctor i guess for the sake of time what we can do is uh, uh, if we can move forward, accept the money, but uh, if necessary, I'll, I'll put a motion on the floor and, uh, to hold for 30 days the finalization of all sites. That would allow plenty of time for Dr. Holly to share some suggestions for the East End. It would allow plenty of time to contact any service providers or what other options we have in that area. And we can we, we can move forward on that. So that's my my recommendation. If I'd like to, if I can do that appropriately. Can I just have a point of clarification: Are we voting on sites tonight, or are we just voting? The, 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 the sites, the do money. Not... I mean, let's get let's get down to what we're voting on tonight vote tonight is to accept the grant 
um, and uh, we certainly can come back to the board um, regarding sites. So, excuse me, I still have the floor. The issue of sites does not appear in this legislative booklet this evening, correct? Uh, that's correct. So we are only voting in the accepting of the dollars according to the foundation grant that they wish to give to the district. It's basically the amount of money for the program, not site specific. They're not dictating sites. That's correct. Uh, no, they would not. Just so we know what we're voting not. on. Because the other discussion about sites, which is important, because the East End is a big area, it's nothing to do with tonight's vote. So if you reject this, you're rejecting the ability to accept this grant. That's all, that's all it is. It's a yes or no for the acceptance of the money. If you read it clearly, there's nothing about sites in here that I can find. So that's why I'm asking for the point of clarification. It's only to accept the grant money. Thank well, you. And, and let, let me finish. I, uh, it, and I appreciate that, but, but we had an extensive discussion at the agenda review concerning sites. So the question is, does these, this dollar figure, does it reflect the number of sites that were suggested or recommended at the agenda review. Now we can go on and on all night, but let's just do that. I don't, you know, I appreciate Mr. Eisler's comments, but I don't appreciate the oversimplifying. It's just like that. If you don't include it and make mention of it, uh, this thing will move forward and you have an entire part of the city that would be left out. So Dr. Lane, is there some way that we can get some commitment or if necessary, I can put something on the floor. We can make it a two part. Let's just vote to accept this. But let's also make a friendly amendment that, uh, that this administration will work within the next 30 days to identify a site. And Dr. Holly, I'm sure you'll make yourself available to work with staff and, on, and identifying a site. If that's necessary to put into a, a motion, then, then please consider that as a motion and then we can, I'd like to move forward. Uh, we can accept the dollars amount, but we are gonna make a, an, a friendly amendment that we will identify and include an East End site uh, with Dr. Holly working closely with staff to, uh, to identify that site. Uh, that is the motion. Is there a second to his motion? I second it. Mr. Weiss, can we have a vote? Uh, discussion on the motion? Mrs. Kalesi. Okay. Um, I don't understand the motion, Mr. Brentley, simply because, first of all, I don't want to put us in a position where we're having staff commit to looking at something that there's no commitment to right now. That should be something that, and I hope I made sense, um, there is nothing in here that says anything about sites. All it says is that we're accepting the money. I don't want to go causing an issue of something you're asking them to do that right now they're going to do anyway, but has there's no um, help me. There's no need to go, to go there at this point. I think that they understand that there's a major concern of the East End. They're going to go back and do what they got to do. But I want I want us to approve this money and not not going not extending this any further than it needs to go. There's no there's no there's no places here in this number at all. I, I just want to say, um, I understand what Mr. Eisler is saying, that uh, when I read over the, um, the legislative meeting notes, that there were no sites added. However, the sites were added at a gender review. And that's my concern. Why were the sites left off? in this particular, in the legislative meeting and not placed in the, when it was placed on the agenda review. Yeah, uh, agenda I think we review. need to be clear. I think we really need to be clear here. The I wasn't through yet. I'm sorry, I just, I'm sorry. I, I thought you were, yet. I thought no, you were turning off through. your mic. No, I'm not through. So I understand the need to accept the money and I'm more than willing to do that. But you gave me a mixed message when you had the sites listed in your agenda review notes, and then you didn't have them as part of your legislative notes. That's all I'm saying. So 
I just assume that I'm going to carry over what we discussed from your from the uh, agenda review to go in with. But, so you, so please don't tell me you deliberately left them off so that we wouldn't have this um, conversation. <laughs> now, I'm. I would not have missed this conversation for anything. Um, the difference between what you saw at agenda review and what you're seeing tonight is the actual board tab has a lot of information on it. It has additional information and sometimes there are even extra pages. But what is in your book tonight is what the board is actually voting on. It's not all the extra information. And so what is being voted on tonight does not name sites because this was actually part of um, this was taken from the tab, but it doesn't have all the information that the tab contains. And so there's a difference between the board tab that you see at agenda review and what you actually vote this evening, or being asked to vote on this evening. However, since we know that the sites are clearly an issue, we will go back and review the site, uh, the site issue again. Um, as I said, I did not personally check out every site and find out who has construction and who has air conditioning and who has a gym and all those kinds of things. But we will provide you that information and review to see before the January meeting if there are other options we might consider in order to accommodate uh, the large number of children that are uh, probably would have, could attend certainly at Malliance, but it would be a distance for them to attend at Malliance. And so, are we willing to review it? Yes. You're not locking yourselves into any sites this evening. All you're doing is agreeing to accept the money. But the one thing I will caution the board on is we cannot get more money. And so what we, if we end up changing sites, what happens is we probably will give up a site in order to get a different site. So we can't just add another site because there are overhead costs related to opening another site that we won't be able to cover. And so, it, as I said, if we move out of uh, Malayans, we're going to be uh, to move to another site is a possibility. We'll see if there's a way to add one without taking one away, but I can't guarantee that. I'm not asking you to take away the Malayans site. Um, the central part of the city is, is in as much need of academic help as it is in the East End. But I want people to understand how large the East End is. You're talking about children that are coming all the way from Stanton Heights, Morningside, Highland Park, Lincoln Lemington, Lincoln Larmer, Homewood, East Hills, um, Squirrel Hill, Point Breeze. You're talking about a lot of children that live in the East End and a lot of children that need support. So not to have something that's there for them in that particular in that part of the city there is just unconscionable i'm not going to keep going over this I, you know my feeling about it so i'm done is there any more discussion on the motion no, I, I just want to say as i mentioned before this is just a friendly environment this just simply uh this commits this administration to working out and identifying a location on the north side i'm on the on the, uh, the east end but here's the other thing, Doctor, and I would hope that your staff would be, be cautious of this. The reason why it's important that we begin to show some commitments to that area, uh, there's major problems going on in the East End. They have been targeted, those schools, over the last five years with this the Roosevelt experiment. Just yesterday at the public hearing, you've had at least three or four community folks who have asked for an apology based upon misfires that this staff and administration uh, has caused with the Westinghouse School. And so it, it's kind of an olive branch. You know, we have to find a way to make that community uh, in somewhat inclusive. We don't include them like we do other communities, not to mention approximately three years ago, this admi previous administration, we actually had to put a motion on the floor to force Mark Roosevelt to consider going into Homewood or in that East End in meeting with the community. Motion failed, so he didn't have to go. He didn't have to deal with those. And so I am only suggesting, just like we found a way to adjust because board members were very vocal on this, this Brashear move, 
and threats of not supporting it, and we found a way. And we were, and I'm going to support that. All I'm saying, we have to do the same thing in a community that needs every bit of help that they can get, especially for African American children, which will be the majority of the students who would benefit from it. So uh, that is all. It, this amendment just has nothing to do with uh, interfering with accepting the money. We're accepting the money, but we're also holding the administration's feet to the fire for the next 30 days to come up with the location. Thank you. I heard nothing this evening to make me think. Oh, go ahead, Mr. McCray. Um, first of all, this is the motion is just to put one on the east end and nowhere else. They've already, the other sites have already been. Oh, okay. Oh, the, the motion. The motion is is to have. Here, let, let Mr. Weiss. Would you read the motion? I catch you off guard. No, the motion is <clears throat> to direct the staff to uh, consider the inclusion of an East End site and to report back within 30 days. That's my understanding of the amendment. That, that, that's about it. Is yeah. that right? Yes, that's about it. Because the other sites have been identified. Does anybody at the table realize that the West End exists? Yeah. Having to travel. So I can't support somebody, a motion that's only going to take care of one part, one little part of the city when an equally large part of the city is totally disregarded. Thank you. You can always amend it to the West End. Yeah, I, I, I don't have any trouble with asking the staff to do something. I think in good faith, Dr. Lane has heard what we're asking for. I, really, I mean, I hate to be nitpicky about this, but is Dr. Hawley listed to the communities or neighborhoods or whatever you want to call them in the East End? It is a huge geographic area. Are we looking for a specific part of the East End or any place in the East End. I mean, I think that's what we, you know, we're asking, well, and yeah, and some people, I mean, I, you know, I hate to say it, some people based upon who at what time is representing certain parts of the city may consider Malines the East End. I mean, I hate to say that, Dr. Holly, I'm just saying there are people who may perceive the East End larger than I do or smaller. So I think we have to be realistic about what we're asking this administration to do. I feel comfortable that the message has been given. Now, you know, if we have to put everything in the form of a motion and vote on it, I think there's a real question of trust between this board and the administration. So I'm comfortable that the administration has heard us. Thank you, Mrs. Azuda. I, I think in this instance, it is just an overemphasis of the concern of some board members. It's not, we don't want to micromanage. We do trust the administration, that we hired the administration. There are administration. So again, the questions were asked at agenda review concerning this and answers came back, we couldn't find anything. So it's just an overemphasis of the same point to carry it out again. And if that's what was gonna be done anyway, there's no harm, no foul in this situation. And if anybody has any other areas that should be included, that should be mentioned. Uh, we're talking about distributing resources in an equitable manner such that we don't produce any hardships for any students to take advantage of the opportunities that we provide them. So again, in this one particular isolated, unique situation, it's just an overemphasizing of the need for going back to the drawing board and seeing if some other more equitable alternative can be developed. Thank you. Um, I, I just wanted to say that um, I, th I believe I heard Dr. Lane say that she commits to going back and looking at the Easton School, and um, I agree with the statement that there's, there's no need for us to legislate that. I think um, it, based on your statement, I believe you, and I, I can't understand why a, an acceptance of a grant would need an amendment that Dr. Lane has agreed to. 
Thank you. Thank you. That's what I was basically going to say. Um, I've heard nothing either last week or tonight to make me think that this isn't going to continue to be um, looked at and that we would hear back from the administration on any results, whichever way it may go. Um, Mr. Weiss. This is a roll call on the amendment. It was moved and seconded. Mr. Brentley? Yes. Mrs. Kalazi? No. Mrs. Fink? No. Dr. Holly? Yes. Mr. Eisler? No. <clears throat> Mr. McCray? No. Ms. Sheely? No. Mr. Sumter? No. Mrs. Azuda? No. Okay, the motion, the amendment fills two to seven, so the, the uh, education agenda is, and the, the, the item will remain as it is, and we'll proceed. Mr. Brentley, do you have any further comments on the Education Committee report? No. Okay, Mrs. Kalasi, Mrs. Fink, Dr. Hawley. No. This is a roll call on the Education uh, Report. Mr. Brentley? I'll be voting yes on the report uh, on the, the first page. Uh, number one, because there's no commitment for poor African-American children in East End, I will have to vote, I'll, I'll abstain on number one for the acceptance of the Summer Dreamers program. Mrs. Uh, Kalazi? Yes. Mrs. Fink? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Dr. Holly? I'm going to vote yes on this particular item for number one, but my expectation is is that um, the district will look at supporting the children in the East End. Um, I will be voting no on number eight, and I'll be voting no on number 20, and yes as a whole for the others. Mr. Cray? Um, yes on the report as a whole, no on item number five and number nine, 19, sorry. Five and nineteen. Five and nineteen. No on five and nineteen? Correct. Okay, Mr. Eisman, I'm sorry I went out of order here. Okay. Yes. Ms. Sheely? Yes. Mr. Sumter? Yes. Mrs. Azuda? Yes. Okay, the report's approved. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. We'll move on to the Committee on Business and Finance submitted by Mr. McCray, Chair, and his committee. Before we begin, I'd like to ask Mr. Weiss to please explain the pooling of item C4 related to the homestead exclusion and that we do not have a real estate tax levy resolution. And Mr. Weiss will also speak to the pooling of item C9 related to excess property insurance coverage. Mr. Weiss. C4 and the accompanying uh, resolution, which is C4A, is being pooled because the board cannot take action on that item without the certified assessments for the year 2012. Uh, that is why the board is not voting on the real estate tax levy this evening. Uh, we anticipate receiving both of the, both the commercial and residential figures in, in time for the board to consider both the tax resolution and the homestead farmstead resolution uh, by January 9th, as per the court order of Judge Wettick, which specifically allows the district to adopt its taxes after January 1. So in summary, C4 and C4A are being pulled. C9 is the excess property insurance. Uh, we did not receive a quote <clears throat> for this evening, although we expected that it will be presented to you in January. So C4, the accompanying uh, resolution C4A and C9 are pulled. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. Uh, Mr. Brentley, do you have any questions on the business of finance? Yeah, just a couple of um, quick questions. I want to make sure that um, uh, the item, uh, I believe it's number 12 of page 8. And this is the uh, the resolution dealing with the, uh, the the taping of the board meetings. 
Dr. Lane, will everything pretty much still be as the same? The only thing that's really different is the technical assistance that happens before the camera and before the show comes on. Uh, I, I believe that's correct, Mr. Brentley. It will be substantially the same. I'm okay. sorry. I, I think you're you're talking about 12, which is the excellence for all. That's not. The, is that the same item? Yeah, but that's that's the whole contract for um, the 12. Yeah, it should be yeah 12A and 12. It's in the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and also for um, uh, for C6, uh, maybe Mr. Camarda, if you can just answer this. This is for uh, the resolution of Pittsburgh to comply with the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended by the U.S. Treasury regulations promulgated they're under pursuant to an implementation of the right side. Bottom line, this is about, I, I believe, the sale of Miller School. Correct. Can you tell me what was the total sale price of that building? And then how did, do we or how did we divvy it up once the sale was complete? $110,000 is the sale. And so we used to pay uh, debt service. Okay. And so the... The sale was complete as of closing was last week, Mr. Bradley. La last week, okay. I, on 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 this item, I, I do want to point to my colleagues that the Miller School, we had a, a contractor that this board denied, uh, who made an offer, cash in hand, for one hundred and twenty-five thousand. We eventually rejected him, held it, got into an agreement with another contractor, held it for a year or so, and we eventually sold it for less. Those are the kinds of things that I think we need to take a double, a double look at. I believe the issue of race played a part here, and, and I'm going to encourage my colleagues again that we have to find a way to create an even playing field individual interested in purchasing uh, property, providing contractual services, we should create an even playing field for all. Here it is, the building is sold, and we actually took a loss on, on the building. My final comment would be on page, uh, page nine, which is, this is the Alvarez Marshall public sector uh, contract. Now, Dr. Lane, you just mentioned that this is going to go over into the next year in terms of its service, but the dollar amount actually to the district was how much did we pay for the service? Yeah, the uh, total contract uh, was 250000 um, The district's contribution to that contract was 50000 Okay. Uh, you know, I want to just point out some things to our, my colleagues again is uh, could we have received those services here locally? Uh, were there individuals, retirees, that we could have put a call out that would have been more than willing to share uh, their recommendations and working with us on the board, I mean, on the budget? Uh, but nevertheless, this is a ticket item. Uh, or even some former employees who we've praised in the past for their financial ability and how they were able to run this district. Uh, sometimes even an opportunity of sharing a comment with individuals and asking for their help. I think we could have saved some money. So I just wanted to point that out while it's only 50,000 uh, that the district actually put out. Nevertheless, it was a $250,000 ticket item. And so I wanted to remind my colleagues and encourage them that during these hard times, we have to be creative in how we give out contracts uh, how we uh, reach out or why we should consider reaching out to others and trying to find a way to save a few dollars for um, a few dollars for taxpayers. Are, are the amendments also before us as well on this item? Or that, that's part of the personnel. Okay. 
that's that's all I have. If they're not, that's it. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Kalesi. Thank you, um, Mr. Camarda. The Miller Building was sold for one hundred and ten thousand dollars. Did I understand, sir? Correct. And what was the debt service? I think it was slightly more, maybe one hundred sixteen. I'm sorry. Repeat yourself. I think it might have been one hundred sixteen thousand. So we're still about six thousand dollars in the hole. That is correct. Thank you. Um, so just for it's my estimate. So um, as far as um, I'm sorry, for point of clarification, I want to make sure I understand. On page eight of ten, we will be pooling number nine. On page six of ten, we're pooling number four, which reflects C4, which is in resolution form in the back. Am I correct? Correct. Is there anything else that we're pooling? In the in the Mr. Weiss spoke to the real estate millage item. There's no resolution there. There's nothing to really right. pull. I'm, I'm talking about what we're pulling only. There's uh, it's just C4 and C4A and C9. Thank you. Dr. Hawley. Mr. Eisler. Thank you, Mrs. Suzuta, uh, Mr. Weiss, and or Mr. Camarda. In this next vote, we are voting to levy taxes for 2002, both the earned income tax and the realty transfer tax. Are, e are these two taxes that we are levying the same amount as we have levied in 2011? Yes. So there is no tax increase whatsoever being voted on tonight we are remaining under the same levies in both of these as we had for 2011. that's correct thank you thank you mrs azuda thank you mr mccray twice on the sale of the miller building we did everything according to the letter of the law correct yes okay um i just wanted to clarify that that there was no no shady deals nothing underhanded no the allegations were made are all false Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sumter. Thank you, Mrs. Fazuda. Uh, first item I just want to call attention to is on page three of the business report, that's B6, where it's resolved that the Board of Directors of the School District of Pittsburgh authorizes proper officers to enter into a contract with the University Center for social and urban research at a cost not to exceed X number of dollars. Uh, the concern here is that if we were to have request that this outfit could accommodate, this is not a good word to use, not outfit, this uh, entity could accommodate those requests. And I say that in a sense that before I came on the board or at the early part of when I was on the board, I saw maps and displays that weren't produced by consultants necessarily, and I think they were done in-house, but they met the needs if you were asking for uh, where students were located, what school students were going to, things of that nature. We had the, the Young study, which was to provide us all this capability of mapping and uh, data analysis and presentations, and again, questions were asked. However, those that information is not being presented. I'm just hoping that if we're taking on another entity to provide information that if uh, the board had certain data requests that they would be able to accommodate. And I don't think it would be beyond the capabilities. It's just ensuring or at least hoping that they would be able to do that. Uh, when you have information presented graphically, it's a little bit better to digest than just in written format. And if you could see it right before you on a map and see it coded and, and things of that nature would go a long way. So I'm just saying that as a uh, comment to uh, keep in mind regarding when we have uh, consultants provide us with technical information. Uh, I'd like to draw your attention to item 12 on page 8. That is uh, C12. And that's the item that deals with the uh, Board of Directors of the School District of Pittsburgh authorizing proper officers in our agreement with the City of Pittsburgh. One is to provide the, um, I think B9 was 
to provide the broadcast or is this this one is to provide the broadcast this one's to ensure the telecast and the distinction between b9 and c12 excuse me let's go back to b9 b9 is the one that does the work c12 broadcasts what is done the concern on b9 broadcast also pardon B9 is to record it and to broadcast it, which is an expansion. B12 is to continue showing it on Pittsburgh Channel. Thank you. So we'll be on channel, in Comcast talk, we'll be on channel 21 and channel 13 right. also. Right. The concern on item B9, the agenda review is a informative meeting for board members but not for those who watch it because they have no idea what we're talking about we're talking in code we're talking about numbers and we don't unless we do explain the items we're talking about it's hard to follow the same conversation carries over to the legislative meeting so in a sense it, to me it's somewhat redundant if we have enough within the budget to provide the broadcast of the agenda review and legislative but more importantly I think we should be broadcasting our education committee meetings this is the Pittsburgh Board of Education education is the bottom line education is what we're here for to educate the education committee meeting is the most important meeting that we hold we can't everything that emanates out of the education committee meeting moves forward if the public can hear in advance what we're talking about, what we're planning, what we're going to do. They don't have to wait to react to either a gender review to come to the public hearing. They would be better informed of what's going on. So to not limit that to just the agenda review and legislative, that if there were another meeting that was, say the education meeting is talking about closing all the schools in the city, I think that would be more important than just talking about it at a gender review, that that should be televised more so. so the item as it's presented, it only limits it to just the agenda review and legislative, but my concern is the education meeting should be at some point in time televised to the public also. I think it would go a long way to engage the public, go a long way to informing the public well in advance of what's going on because a lot of times when we make important decisions, the public is told that they don't have enough time to react to it. A lot of times things that are discussed in education committee are months in advance of when they come to the public. So the public would know as we're deliberating and talking about things, they would know firsthand. So I think it would give them a leg up. So my concern is that we televise education committee meetings. So do we need to amend this now or do we, the board may not want to do that. I might be the only one that's thinking that lines, but that's my concern with uh, B9. I think that's all the concerns I had in that section. Thank you. Ms. Shealy. Thank you, Mrs. Azuda. Um, uh, and forgive me for talking about the pooled item, but um, the original resolution for the tax levy stated that according to Act 1, we had to levy taxes by December 31st. Did Judge Weddick's decision on Monday extend that for us so that we are not in violation of state law? Well, the requirement to levy taxes by December 31 is school code requirement of many years. Act 1 adds some procedural hurdles to it that we have to meet. Judge Wettig has issued an order giving leave to the, to the school district to levy its taxes beyond December 31. And uh, the order states January 11th, based upon the county's representation of when it expects the numbers, the certified numbers to be issued. Obviously, if there's some slippage in that, which I hope there is not, then the judge will have to revisit that. But we expect to give you something <clears throat> by the meeting. You're well, currently planning to have a special meeting January 9th to do that. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Weiss, can we have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Brentley? Yes, on a report. Mrs. Kalazi? Yes. Mrs. Fink? Yes. Dr. Holly? Yes. Mr. Eisler? Yes. Mr. McCray? Yes. Ms. Ms. Sheely? Yes. Mr. Sumter? Yes. Mrs. Azuda? Yes. Reports approved. 
Thank you, Mr. Weiss. Let's move on to the report of personnel. That includes addendums A, B, and C that are before you. Are there any questions on the personnel report at this time? Mr. Brentley. I've got to come back around. Mrs. Kalesi. No, thank you. Mrs. Fink. Dr. Hawley. The item that we have um, where we're going to have some of our retired, our oh, addendum C. Thank you, colleague. I used the wrong word. <laughs> it's not retirement. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> the severance plan uh, that we have before us. I have some um, concerns about that, primarily because I understand, first of all, let me say this. I do understand the need to offer such a package to some of our employees um, because of our budget part problems. However, I don't want to lose my, the senior teachers that I have in the, that we have in the district that have had the opportunity to go through um, our PRISM model and also the rich um, technology type based programming that we've had over the past five to ten years. I'm really concerned about losing a group of those teachers and I'm having them leave the school district. I don't think you're going to get very many um, just because of the financial constraints that we're having, um, everybody's having, just living from day to day. But that to me seems like the group that you really want to keep. I can't see a district having new teachers who are just coming into the district or who are just learning and those who are exiting to go out into retirement. So I'm going to have to say that I'm not going to be supporting this um, either, primarily because I just don't want to lose that richness of staff at this particular time. Thank you, Mr. Eisler. Uh, my questions have all been answered. Thank you. Mr. McRae. I was recently here, but um, <laughs> I knew somebody catch that. Uh, so I'll have to abstain on any, any of the addendums. And I also want to recognize and thank our staff for uh, their service to the military. And I'm glad that the war is over. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sumter. Thank you very much, Mrs. Azuda. I want to draw attention to addendum C also. Uh, my concern there also was the effect on the quality of the staff. Uh, these are somewhat seasoned individuals that aren't eligible for retirement, but are better than those coming in if they're quality and effective teachers. So the concern I would have on what effect that would have on the quality of the overall staff and if we're trying to get all of the teachers uh, to the level of effectiveness, uh, what, whether that would burden that uh, situation. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shealy. No, um, no, I'm sorry, thank you, yes. Uh, um, Ms. Fuller, and I'm not sure if this is appropriate, but haven't you, have you modeled or estimated the number of people who would be interested in um, a severance package such as this? And can you share your estimates of that number publicly? Yes, we worked with um, a firm 
to model this retirement incentive and then manage it for us. And excuse me, not retirement incentive, this um, severance pay plan. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm the one that's been so careful about that. So I did misspeak this severance plan. Um, and they do estimate that the number of individuals um, who would likely take advantage of this voluntary severance plan um, would be minimal. Their estimate was approximately 25 based on the modeling of um, what's being offered here. So that's what they advised and us based on their experience. What's the teacher core? What, uh, 25 out of how many possible people? The eligible pool is about 1,200 teachers. Two. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Swolar. Thank you. Mr. Brentley. Uh, I just wanted to, and that was one of my notes that I made. I, I just wanted to defer my comments to hearing Dr. Hawley's uh, opinion on, on C. I, I have to tell you, I, it makes a lot of sense. I, I don't understand it, but I understand the staff and its recommendation. Maybe we have to consider some other options or explore uh, in another area that would kind of get them to the number where they're at. Just, just one quick question to Dr. Lane. Uh, have we had any kind of contact with the PFT and getting feedback with them at all? Yes. Okay. And their comments in support of? In support? Um, I believe, um, certainly I wouldn't want to represent the PFT, uh, but they are aware of it and uh, yes, I think so. They're supportive of it. I, I wouldn't want to um, misspeak uh, because certainly they might have interest in other areas as well, but they are willing to support this. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Weiss, may we have a roll call on the report on personnel, please? Mr. Bradley? Yes, on the report, I'll abstain on uh, the addendum C. Mrs. Clazy? Yes. Mrs. Fink? Yes. Dr. Hawley? Yes on the report as a whole, no on addendum C. Mr. Eisler? Yes. Mr. McCray? Uh, yes on the report as a whole, and I'll abstain on the addendums. Okay. Mr. Sumter? Yes on the report as a whole, no on addendum C. Ms. Sheely, I'm sorry, I skipped you here. That's okay, yes. This is Zuda. Yes. Your okay, report's approved with it, and all the addenda are approved as well. Okay, I'd like to ask everyone to go to the financial report. It's the gold tab. I'd like to call the board's attention to the financial statement dated November 30th, 2011. We have a budget transfer before us this evening that requires approval. Are there any questions or comments on the transfer? Mr. Eisler. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Asuda. You went a little fast for me there, so I want to go back to um, the financial report and the key financial indicators as of October 30th, 2011. Mr. Camarda, um, there is a period of time where we will not be receiving um, the financial report because we'll be closing out the fiscal year, correct? That's correct. So really, this is a last chance to ask you some questions about where you think we're going to stand over the next couple of days. That's the last financial statement you'll see before March. Right. Thank you, sir. I just want to be clear about this. Knowing um, how tight the budget is and knowing uh, that a lot rests on projections, um, the indicators, I think, all look good. I mean, I, I, it looks as if our revenue is up in the general fund. That's correct. Is there a reason for that? We're looking at the uh, local revenues to see if it's all just related to the timing, and we'll have a better sense of that as we move through uh, the first part of 2012. Okay, and the expenditures um, also are in line with projections? The expenditures are in line with projections, even though high, you know, higher than last year, but that was in line with what we're projecting for year end. Right. So in terms of where we expected to end the year, 
we still believe we're expecting to end the year at, a, at about that $7 million, $8 million projected deficit. Which was consistent with what you projected when we passed last year's budget, the 2011. Our 2012, that was what we did when we adopted. Sorry. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Azuda. Thank you for keeping me honest, Mr. Eisler. Any other questions Tough on any job, of this? Mrs. <laughs> Somebody has to do it. Any other questions? All right. Mr. Weiss, may we have a roll call, please? This is on the transfer of funds. Mr. Brentley? Yes. Mrs. Kalazi? Yes. Mrs. Fink? Yes. Dr. Hawley? Yes. Mr. Eisler? Yes. Mr. McCray? Yes. Ms. Sheely? Yes. Mr. Sumter? Yes. This is Azuda. Yes. Transfers approved. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. Now we'll go to the earned income tax. Um, it's the gray tab. The next item before us is the earned income tax for the fiscal year 2012 that I'd like to read at this time. Resolved that the Board of Public Education of the School District of Pittsburgh does hereby levy and assess for the fiscal year beginning on the first day of January 2012 a tax of 2% on salaries, wages, commissions, and other compensation earned by residents of the school district and on net profits earned from businesses, professions, and other activities conducted by residents of the school district pursuant to the provision set forth in the specific statutes that are contained in the resolution that is before you. Are there any questions or comments on the earned income tax levies at this time? Ms. Chile. The, uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I, unless I'm reading the book wrong, I did not catch this before. My book says 1%. There are, there are two resolutions. There's the other one. It's on the other page. These taxes are levied under separate statutes. They're each 1%. Okay. So one's I on, did flip it. One's on one side, one's on the other. I see where we can give back. We have to give the quarter percent to the city. Yes. Am I in the right? Okay, thank you. I'm in the right area. Right. Thank you. So what she read, though, is not the actual resolution. Well, what she read is the total is 2%, and she referenced the two statutes that are referenced in the agenda so as to not require her to read all, the whole thing. Thank but, you. But the minutes should reflect the fact that the resolutions in the agenda re, uh, reference the correct statutes. Thank you. No, no additional questions. Anyone else have questions? Okay. Mr. Weiss, may we have a roll call, please, on the earned income tax levy? You're voting on both of those items that are on the same opposite pages, opposite sides of the page. Mr. Brentley? Yes. Mrs. Kalazi? Mrs. Fink? Yes. Dr. Hawley? Yes. Mr. Eisler? Yes. Mr. McCray? Yes. Mr. Sumter? Yes. Ms. Sheely? Yes. Mrs. Azuda? Yes. All right, the earned income tax resolutions are approved. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. We'll now move on to the realty transfer tax for fiscal year 2012. It's the red tab that I would like to read at this time. Resolved that the Board of Public Education of the School District of Pittsburgh does hereby levy and assess for the fiscal year beginning on the first day of January 2012, a tax of 2% of the value of each transfer of any interest in real property situated within the school district upon the terms and conditions subject to the exceptions set forth in the remaining portions of the resolution. Are there any questions or comments at this time? Seeing none, Mr. Weiss, may we have a roll call vote? Mr. Brentley? Yes. Mrs. Kalazi? Yes. Mrs. Fink? Yes. Dr. Hawley? Yes. Mr. Eisler? Yes. Mr. McCray? Yes. Ms. Sheely? Yes. Mr. Stumter? Yes. Mrs. Azuda? Yes. Realty transfer tax resolutions approved. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. There are two new business items to be brought before the board this evening. I'd like to read the first new business item at this time. Resolved, that's what we just did. 
resolved that the Board of Directors of the School District of Pittsburgh authorize its proper officers to accept a donation of holiday gift bags containing items such as stickers, crayons, and coloring books for the preschool classrooms of Pittsburgh, Fort Pitt, pre-K to five from the employees of the Office of Human Resources. The total amount of donated items is $400. The board extends its thanks and appreciation to the employees of the Office of Human Resources for their support. I need a second. Okay. Glazy Eisler. Shielding. Okay. <laughs> Any comments or questions? Mr. Brett. I'm reading and understanding this correctly, Dr. Lane. This is something that our employees are doing pretty much on their own, making these donations. Is that correct? Um, actually, um, the Human Resources Department, Ms. Fuller may want to speak to this, decided rather than give each other gifts as they have traditionally done, they would prefer to do something for, the ch for children. And so they uh, actually uh, prepared gift bags for the pre-K children at Fort Pitt and um, went to school and um, I think today, was it today? Okay, put them together today, and so children will be getting those. Well, this is a story, Dr. Dr. Lang, that we don't often hear about. Uh, it appears to be out of the kindness of the heart of our staff. And, and so I just want to take uh, a, an opportunity to say thank you to those staff members. I am certain that you are making quite a few students uh, happy. And uh, it just makes me start to dream and to start to multiply things that in their own way, if other departments would identify a group or a class that was in need, what we would be able to, to accomplish. Not necessarily money or not necessarily gifts, but uh, scarves, gloves, uh, coats that someone's not using anymore. It can simply go a long way. So uh, to this, well, maybe that's to you, Ms. Fuller, to, to your staff. Um, just wanted to say uh, thank you so much, and it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, suggestion. I'm waiting for the next one, the one where it's put together for board members. Is that going to be coming before us as well? I didn't, I didn't get a copy of that. I don't know. The chair of that a, committee, Mr. Brentley. I'd like to make, make a motion to appoint Mr. Brentley as head of that. Did you want to comment? No. Okay, Dr. Holly. I too want to say thank you to um, Human Resources for this wonderful gift. Um, it's much more than just giving of the bags with treats and presents inside. It's the fact that um, someone is coming into the school and actually um, supporting uh, the children. And you don't know how much that means to a small child to have a whole group of adults come in and, um, you know, support them during this holiday season. So I also want to say um, thank you uh, for thinking of them and doing such a wonderful activity such as that. And for that one, I think it should be are we going to videotape that? You videotape everything else. <laughs> so it would be nice to have um, some videotape, it, you know, some um, tape of that activity going on um, during that time. Anyone else? Just, um, just quickly, just to second um, Dr. Holly's comment, or at least to get some photos for the educator, some the Pittsburgh educator, something to record that event, because that, that would be great for us all to see. Thank you, Mrs. Azuda. Um, we should record as much as we can. We should take pictures as much as we can, whether it's used or not in the media or not. We need a record of what we do. And I would ask that board members please give a round of applause for our Office of Human Resources. Thank you. Mrs. Azuda, I do think that Mr. Brantley's comment is a very important one in terms of telling the story. I would hope that some of this gets onto the website because I think it really does show the commitment of employees of the Pittsburgh schools. Thank you. 
Mr. Weiss, may we have a roll call vote, please? Aye. Opposed? Uh, new business item one is approved. All right, thank you for setting us that time. I'd like to read the second new business item. Resolved that the Board of Directors of the School District of Pittsburgh authorize its proper officers to accept donations of holiday gifts for all 500 students at Pittsburgh King Pre-K to 8 from All My Kids Charities, LLC, Alcoa, Allegheny General Hospital, Urban Pathways, and the South Fayette School District. The estimated value of this donation is $3,500. Due to the overwhelming response from the community, the number of holiday gifts donated has exceeded all expectations. The school will be donating bags of holiday, holiday gifts to the family from Pittsburgh phase on K-5 to who have suffered the recent tragedy. The board extends its thanks and appreciation to All My Kids Charities, LLC, Alcoa, Allegheny General Hospital, Urban Pathways, and the South Fayette School District for their support. Are there any questions or comments? Second. Wait a minute. Mr. Eisler had his. I, I don't mind emotions. I, I just think what's really fascinating tonight, um, King sits in the heart of where Alcoa has a phenomenal number of offices and employees as well as Allegheny General. I think it's fabulous. Um, that they recognize the school and these students. I think also having Urban Pathways come in on board really says something. What's really significant to me is South Fayette. Um, superintendent is Dr. Billy Romanelli. She's an outstanding educator, uh, tremendous commitment to education. And I, I just think this combination of these four people, four groups, is just really amazing. And, and um, it really shows, I think, of this whole concept that if we're really going to educate our children, we're going to need a lot of help. And just to be able to do this and also to help a family that really has uh, seen a tragedy that is just in many ways beyond belief is quite great. So to these four entities, um, thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. McCray, did you make a motion? I make a motion to approve. Okay. McCray Colasi. Okay. I didn't know if you heard it or not. All right. Mr. Weiss, it's up to you. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? New business item two is approved. Thank you. Does anyone have any other new business that requires board approval? All right. Any new business that you just, any announcements? Mr. Brentley. Yes, I just want to. Um... It, and I had my notes to make comments. I'm glad someone already recognized uh, the family, the tragedy in Homewood. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it were two Pittsburgh public school students, if I'm not mistaken. And so we uh, just want to extend uh, our deepest sympathy to that family and also to the community as a whole. If I'm not mistaken, this is the second tragedy by fire in, fa in, in the household I want to say in the last four years, and it was a trap, maybe a little longer, I'm not sure the actual date. So um, uh, it's, it's an entire a region that's suffering uh, from the loss of, of, of children as well as Pittsburgh public school children. I, I do want to, um, at this time, just uh, give to you, Dr. Lane, a, um, a copy of uh, what I shared last month. And this is uh, concerning the, and I'll pass this book now. I do have a couple. And uh, one that I'm going to give to our solicitor as well as one for the board office. This was the um, the uh, Charitable Endowment of Pittsburgh Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Inc. The Alpha Alpha Omega Chapter. Their Precious to Culture Pearls Presentation Ball. It was held at the Churchill Valley Country Club, and it was held this past Friday, on the 16th. Uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful event. It was a formal event, and this is where we recognize young ladies. Uh, this year, I believe there were 13 young ladies who were recognized. Uh, two of them were Pittsburgh public school students. And I, I just want to uh, share this information to make sure that I, I believe if they do it every two years, that if we have two this year, that we can work hard next year to try next year or in two years, that we can find a way to, um, to increase 
uh, to increase the numbers. The young ladies, uh, uh, Brianna Woodson from Perry Traditional Academy and Danielle Rupel from Alderdice High School were the two young ladies and they look beautiful. Uh, they will be appearing in the local uh, newspapers soon. I don't have the date. Is it today? It's already, it's in today's paper, Post-Gazette or Trips? It's in Post -Gazette, the Post-Gazette today. Uh, so I just want to uh, congratulate them, but there was uh, the Pittsburgh Public Schools fingerprints was all over this wonderful event. Uh, the MC for the evening was uh, Dr. Wayne Walters, uh, principal at Obama. Uh, the escorts were uh, students from Obama who were there dressed formally and, and escorting some of the young ladies. And then the president of the Alpha Alpha Omega Pittsburgh chapter is none other than none other than Tony Kendricks, who was a principal at Allegheny Middle School. It was a wonderful event. Uh, Mr. Weiss, this is for you because I believe you Thank were you. gracious enough to take out a full page ad, which they are very, very appreciative uh, of it. And I do have one for uh, the board uh, members. There will be a video coming out shortly, and I'll also, uh, if possible, make it available uh, to anyone here who's interested. And, and I believe that's all I have for this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Brentley, Mrs. Kalazi. Thank Dr. Holly. Yes, on January 12th, the Spirit of King will be at um, Kingsley Association. And I would like for um, to invite all of the board members and central staff to that um, event. Uh, as you know, as many of you know, the event does um, celebrate the life of, of someone in the community that has been uh, that has done uh, great things. Uh, one such person was uh, two years ago our board president, our former board president, Jake Malines. So there are um, a lot of people that will be there, and we really should be there in support of that program. And if I'm not mistaken, well, you, when I was working. Uh, we also had students that participated in that program. So I'm hoping that the district will come out um, in support of that. And I also want to say thank you to the AKAs for doing a wonderful job in supporting our young women um, as they go through um, their coming out time. And we'll bring something else to you in the spring that will be similar. Mr. Isaac. Thanks, Mrs. Zuda. You know, um, one of the things that Mr. Sumter said is probably the most important thing we do is to work on the education committee and the work for students that we have every day. And sometimes, in spite of insurmountable odds, um, we get to see greatness. And last week, um, Madeleine Albright, uh, who has been in public office all her life in the United Nations as secretary, first female secretary of state, was in Pittsburgh for a number of events. I know Dr. Lane represented us at a morning breakfast with distinguished women of, of Pittsburgh, and then accompanied uh, Secretary Albright to Obama. And there were six students on a panel. Uh, there were a lot more students in the room. And if anybody ever wonders um, about success with students, the six students who had questions for the secretary were outstanding. Um, they, I. I I think she was very impressed with the school. She asked to go to a public school, was very interested in the fact that we had an international studies program that, that uh, spanned uh, 612. But um, those students were really just spectacular. I think the questioning was this, this high level, actually higher level than what we usually see in this country asked of public officials. Um, they really did some, some very good questions, but even the questions from the audience, the other students who were there, so my hat's off to uh, those teachers and administrators who work hard every day to see our students succeed. Those students um, we're going to hear a lot about in the years to come. Thank you, Mrs. Azuda. Thank you, Mr. Sumter. I'm good. Thank you, Mrs. Azuda. Uh, also, to piggyback on what Mr. Eister said, it was fascinating to find out that Madeleine Albright was at one time a school board member. 
some information I want to pass along is that in the last early childhood Head Start Policy Council meeting, uh, the newly elected vice chair stood up and mentioned that it was commendable upon the part of Superintendent Dr. Lane to forego the bonus that was voted in for her. And you may or uh, you probably will get a letter from the Early Childhood Policy Council. They mentioned that uh, during the meeting. So they did take note of that and they commended you for that. Also, because this is that time of year, this is the last day of fall. However, before the end of the year, if you want to consider donating to the Pittsburgh Promise to make sure you get your tax deductions, that's something to consider along with all the other worthy causes. But again, Pittsburgh Promise, it's an investment in our children's future. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shealy. Okay. Before we adjourn, I would like to make one final announcement. On Friday, November 15, 2011, the district marked its 100th year anniversary with the unveiling of a special poster panel capturing the district's first decade of operation, 1911 to 1921. As many of you joining us tonight may have noticed, our second panel of the series commemorating the years 1921 to 1931 is now on display. This new panel will be permanently on display here on the first floor of the administration building located at 341 South Belfield Avenue. We will be unveiling a new panel each month commemorating each decade of the past 100 years. If there are no further announcements, motion to adjourn. Uh -huh. Eisler Fink. I oh, just wanted to say I wasn't on the board then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess that makes the motion Eisler Kalesi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all those in favor? All right, meeting adjourned. Give us a minute and we'll start to the Pittsburgh Mount Oliver Intermediate Unit. You all right? I just wanted to wish everybody a happy holiday while we're changing over. I'd like to call the December 20th, 2011 meeting of the Pittsburgh Mount Oliver Intermediate Unit to order. Mr. Weiss, may we have a roll call, please? Mr. Brentley? Here. Mrs. Kalazi? Here. Mrs. Fink? Here. Dr. Hawley? Here. Mr. Eisler? Present. Mr. McCray? Here. Ms. Sheely? Here. Mr. Sumter? Present. Mrs. Zudin? Present. All members present. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. Will board members please turn to the minutes from last month? Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions? Approved. Second. Eisler Kalesi, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. Um, Committee on Education. Any questions, comments, concerns? Make eye contact with me. All right. Mr. Weiss, may we have a roll call? Friendly? Here. Yes. Mrs. Kalesi? <laughs> yes. Mrs. Frank? <laughs> yes. Dr. Hawley? Yes. Mr. Ice? Yes. Mr. McCray? Yes. Ms. Sheely? Yes. Mr. Sumpson? Yes. Mrs. Azuda? Yes. Reports approved. Thanks, Mr. Weiss. Let's move to the committee report on business that is before us, submitted by Mr. McCray, chair and his committee. Are there any questions or comments that were not addressed at agenda review? Seeing none, may, Mr. Weiss, may we have a roll call, please? Mr. Brentley? Yes. Mr. Glazy? Here. Yes. Mr. Mr. Spink? <laughs> It's catchy, yes. Dr. Dr. Holly? Yes. Mr. Eisner? Yes. Mr. McCray? Yes. Ms. Sheely? Yes. Mr. Sumter? Yes. Mrs. Azuda? Yes. Court's approved. There's no personnel report for the Pittsburgh Mount Oliver Intermediate Unit this evening. Are there any items to be brought before the board at this time? Before we adjourn, I would like to wish everyone, all of you and your families, a very Merry Christmas. May I have a motion to adjourn? Eisler, Kalesi, Fink, and Sheely. <laughs> Take your pick. All those in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned.